Let me show you a couple things with the Panasonic LX3 to maybe help you get started. First, here is your hot shoe, and this can be used to attach an external flash. The built-in flash, if I just pop that by moving this switch over, as you can see, is very, very small and therefore not very powerful. This is probably good for about 10 feet. If your subject is more than 10 feet away, you'll either need to avoid using the flash, increase the ISO, or use an external flash that's a lot more powerful. Here is your mode dial. You have a scene mode. If you turn the mode dial to SCN, you'll be able to choose from 24 different scenes that will help you optimize the camera. And you can see how I set each one in the scenes page at lbguides.com. Normally, I use the program mode because it's very versatile and I can control the entire camera. Here's your zoom lever. You can also use this zoom lever when reviewing images in the screen. The same way that you use this to zoom in or zoom out of a picture, you can use it to magnify an image in the screen. And doing so is really great if you want to see whether your picture is in focus or not. So once you've taken a picture, bring it up in the screen on the back and then zoom into it with the zoom lever to see pixel for pixel whether it's in focus before you leave the scene. This focusing button isn't for focusing, but more for moving the focus brackets. So you press your shutter button halfway to focus, but if you press this focus button, you'll be able to move the brackets to a different location in the screen. Down here is your tripod mount and battery door cover. Just move this locking mechanism back and the door will spring open. This camera uses an SD memory card. Just press that in to pop it out. The sticker of the memory card should be towards the back of the camera. Press it in all the way until you hear a click to know that it's locked. Remove the battery by moving this gray locking switch over. This is a lithium ion battery that should last you about 150 to 200 shots. Press it in all the way until the gray locking mechanism moves back into place. Close the door and move the switch over. Lastly, here you have your aspect ratio switch and your focusing switch. If you want to shoot a macro picture or use the manual focus option, you can move this switch. And if you want to use a different aspect ratio, you can use this switch. Now what this means is if you choose the 3 by 2 aspect ratio, it means that you're taking a picture that is slightly cropped at the top and the bottom. It's not going to be the full resolution of the CCD, but if you're printing 4 by 6, you're going to have to crop the top and the bottom anyway, so this is not a problem. If your pictures are intended for viewing on a widescreen TV, like in a slideshow presentation, for example, then you can choose the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Because I don't know what I'm going to do with my pictures, I may want to print some 4 by 6, I may want to display some in a widescreen TV, I'm going to go with the 4 by 3 aspect ratio, and then just crop the images in the computer depending on what I do with them. This will give me the highest resolution the camera can produce, 10 megapixels, and I can choose to crop the image depending on its intended purpose. Turn the camera on with this switch. And most of the time, for any regular picture, I just stick to the program mode. It gives me the full flexibility of the camera. I'll go over the menu briefly. Just press the Set button right here to access the main menu. And there are a lot of features here most of which that relate to your image quality can actually be accessed using the quick menu button right here. So I'm not going to change anything in the menu just yet, but I wanted to show you how you can navigate this menu. First, you have your navigation buttons right here, left, right, up and down. You can always move the highlighted portion using these navigation buttons. You also have pages for each menu. This menu happens to have five pages, and I can quickly move between the pages by using my zoom lever. If I pull the lever to the right, I'll move down to page 2, page 3, and so on. If I push it to the left, I'll go back to page 3, then page 2. In order to select an item, I actually have to press the right arrow button, not the set button. So if I want to set the ISO limit, for example, I'll just press the right navigation button, and then go down to set a maximum of 800 ISO, for example. Then press Set. Then I can just press Set again to escape from the menu. 
The one thing I'd like to change in this menu is actually located in the Setup tab. So I'll move to the left, go down to the Setup tab, and then move over to the right. I'll go down to Beep. Because the camera makes a beeping noise every time I move the highlighted square or press any button, it gets rather annoying after a while. So what I like doing is quieting this beep. Press the right navigation button, and again, to access the beep level, go up to mute, and press set. Now the downside of this is that also the focusing beeps are turned off, meaning usually when I press the shutter button halfway, if the camera is able to lock focus, it gives me a double beep. If it can find a focus point, then it beeps four times. And that's a nice audible way of letting me know whether the camera is in focus or not. However, I can see in the display that my focusing square and focusing dot have turned green if the camera is locked focus. The focusing brackets are red if the camera was not able to find focus. So that's good enough in this case. Go ahead and press set to escape the menu and press set again to get out of the main menu. Up here you have the quick menu. Press it and hold it for just a second until the quick menu comes up. And here you actually have access to most of the things you need when you're taking pictures. Here's white balance for example. If I move over, here's ISO. And I can just move down to ISO 80 which I normally use in daylight situations. Go back to white balance and move that down to daylight. I'll move over one more just to make you aware of the focusing options you have here. Normally I use the standard area focusing option. If you want you can have a spot focusing option to choose a smaller focusing point. There's also face detection and out of focus tracking which allows you to lock focus using the AF lock button right here and the focus will remain locked on the target. Usually I don't use any of these. I'll stick to the regular area focus. Press the quick menu button or set to escape this menu. And you can see I have brackets in the center indicating my focus point. And basically to take a standard picture, I'll just position the focus point over my subject, press the shutter button halfway, wait for the camera to find and lock that focus point, recompose the image, and press the shutter button the rest of the way to take the picture. To find out much more about digital photography and your digital camera, go to lbguides.com.